just so you guys know. Um, what else do we do? So these are the future sessions for our group. Uh, there's a lot of them, but you can always find them on the meetup also. But this is so that if you have to plan for proper lunch um, break or something like that, then this is a great way to do it. Um, so sometimes it is me who is doing the moderating. Sometimes it is Teo. Sometimes we have a new kid on the blog, Surabhi, who is also from Boston. So she would be doing it sometimes too. So uh, just take a look at these and see how best you can plan for your own professional development. These are the events which are outside the DBA user group, but they are like SQL Saturdays, Data Saturdays, and on that. Uh, the two websites up here, uh, sqlsaturday.com and datasaturdays.com, that will give you a lot more information, but this is just so that you have an idea. Although this is well outside the range of three months, I did put the Boston one in because I am 25 years in Boston now in Houston, but also Teo is from Boston, Surbi is from Boston, and there's a lot of good stuff happening. Also, you might want to plan going there in Boston um, during this weekend because it's also absolutely fabulous for its color foliage and fall. There's like 2 million visitors in those two weekends that we get there. Um, remember, past data community, there are two ways you can register there, the tiny URL at the top, or if you're lazy, you can just use the QR code that I did. So make sure that you go ahead and sign up for this uh, as soon as possible, right? And uh, on their website, you should find some emails that will actually tell you how to ask for this as a budget or an approval from your boss. So they're pretty good over there too. So feel free to look it up, okay? Do you want to speak? You have a suggestions? Uh, bouquets, brick bats, for all bouquets, you can email me. For brick bats, email Teob. But yeah, we will definitely get back to you and any feedback, right? Positive, negative. DBAVUG at outlook.com. And the star of the day, Powell, right? Powell, thank you so much for doing this, uh, Azure Synapse. I hope I picked up your right picture from Google. In, uh, yeah, you have the same amount of hair, a little more white now than before. So. Go ahead, take it away, sir. It's all yours. I will stop sharing. Guys, if you have a question, also feel free to ask the questions in the chat room. I'm monitoring that. And uh, if there's not too many questions, then Powell will try to answer them now. Otherwise, we'll keep it at the end of the day. OK? And this is being recorded. So thank you. So let me start. Let me, let, me, let me take over and just please confirm that you can see my screen. That's needed for this session. Dada, yes. Okay, so um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. I'm in Warsaw, so for me it's actually good afternoon, 6 p.m. Um, welcome to this presentation on Azure Synapse Analytics and Power BI Data Marts Better Together. Actually, I, I can tell you that uh, recently I have I uh, have lots of presentations of on Synapse and Power BI in general, uh, but this one is for DBA, so we have to have some SQL in in the in the presentation. So that's why Data Marts will appear here. Now the purpose of this session, before I introduce myself, the purpose of this session is to show you a bit of Synapse, a bit of Data Marts, but also to tell you about what's the direction for both of those services, what can you expect and how to maybe plan a bit in terms of uh, being ready for the future that uh, I would say is, would be quite exciting, but I can share every detail with you today. Uh, hopefully you will find out pretty soon what's, what's new and what's coming to both of those services. So with that, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Paweł Potasiński. I'm a senior program manager on the Azure Synapse Analytics team. I'm not the typical Synapse uh, product program manager because I'm sitting in the team that is responsible for community engagements. So hey, actually speaking to you today is a part of my job. Do not con consider it as a, you know, just a voluntary, but I love to speak to people and just, you know, build networks, uh, meet uh, passionate and people who share a passion to SQL, uh, BI, analytics, whatever. 
Uh, if you ask me about my background, I used to be a SQL developer, heavily working with SQL Server in times where it was at version 7.0, 2000, 2005. Then when the when the 2008 version come, came in, I switched a bit to uh, BI stuff and I moved completely to analytics. Uh, so Power BI, um, Azure, Azure, uh, Azure services for analytics actually became my uh, everyday, everyday job. I used to be Microsoft's most valuable professional on SQL Server and data platform in the past. Uh, then I moved to Microsoft, so they actually uh, do not, they did not allow me to keep this award anymore. But uh, here I am at Microsoft, uh, also uh, playing a lot of MVPs. Uh, actually, MVPs are my, uh, I would say, my my collaborators at, on the community side uh, most of the time. So. I'm super. I'm super thankful that I can uh, collaborate with uh, such great subject matter experts and and community leaders. Um, also, I was lucky enough to start one of the finest communities in Europe, uh, uh, Data Community Poland. Originally, it was it was called uh, SQL Server User Group, Polish SQL Server User Group. Uh, the history of this user group is quite long. We started in 2007 and we have Hubert Kobiezewski on this call who right now is uh, leading this community. Hello Hubert, special special warm, uh, warm greetings to you. Okay, with this introduction, you can catch up with me later on on LinkedIn or Twitter. Um, so basically scan this QR code if you're able to and uh, that will lead you to my LinkedIn profile. Feel free to join my network. I always have always happy to talk about technology, BI, analytics, whatever is on your mind related to data. Now, before I start, uh, this session will be divided into three parts, basically. One, there'll be a couple of slides because I need to introduce the topic and tell you why I picked this session and why I think this, uh, this topic is important. Second, there will be the demo. I will try to make this demo quite uh, quite long and and covering lots of stuff uh, it's not gonna be super deep dive demo but uh, some kind of understanding some principles behind why i think synapse and power bi data more specifically uh, can can be quite quite uh, quite a good choice for several scenarios and then the third part will be q a hopefully we'll get to this uh, before the time but the clock the clock says it's enough so let me start with the Typical introduction to the topic uh, related to what kind of uh, what kind of challenges we face when we deal with data and analytics today. So first of all, people struggle with discovering the data in the organization. So that's actually that's actually the root cause of this is because the, there's there's big data all around. So we have lot lot lots of data, large volumes, um, variety of data, different formats. But also people struggle with discovery because there are lots of systems that uh, that store and serve the data. So this may be a problem uh, as of today. The second question is, can I trust my data because the data itself is useless unless I have some insights from this data? So is this data trustworthy and I can get some insights that will push my business or decisions forward? Now. Next problem is that more and more people are willing to get the, the get access to the data. So this democratization of data, what marketing people say, is actually quite actual. And people are knocking to the doors of every data professional, willing to get the get access to some data that will support their business decisions. And it's not and it's not just it because they will knock not just more often. But also, they will expect you to provide insights faster than it used to be in the past. Historically, I, I was involved in several projects where we were building warehouses for months or even years. So right now, with the cloud technologies and uh, all those platform as a services, uh, software as a services solutions, people expect uh, solutions and insights coming from data coming in weeks sometimes in days if you if you if you're doing some kind of pilot of proof of proof of, proof of concepts and last but not least we, ha we have to stick to the rules so there is always especially for enterprises some background related to security and compliance so you have to meet the the, the rules and guidance on 
how to secure data and make sure you follow the uh, the regulations, for example. Why I'm saying why I'm actually saying this and how this is related to Synapse and Power BI. Well, actually, it's related more to the thing that Microsoft figured out last year. It's called Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform, and I, I see people struggling with how to explain this beast. So for just for you to know, before we step, step further, Synapse and Power BI are both parts of Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform. So what is Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform? It is actually an umbrella logical umbrella for all, all Microsoft services related to data processing. So databases, analytics, machine learning and so on. And if, if you look, if you're looking for some similarities or analogies, you can actually treat this as a kind of power platform for data. So power platform covers services that can be used by citizen developers to develop apps, to automate things, and maybe build some uh, self-service business intelligence. While this, this, this set of services is for build end-to-end -end data landscape for the organization. Having said that, what does it mean actually that Microsoft introduced this intelligent data platform? It means that between those services that fall into this bucket, there is tight integration, and this integration will become even more tighter, even tighter than it's, than it's today. And uh, data marts in Power BI are actually a great example of this, this uh, interoperability between different services and taking some, uh, some elements or parts of different services and pulling them all together. Now, what else, what else we have in terms of challenges? In, ter in terms of challenges, the analytical platform has to has to fulfill the full scope of maturity for organization when it comes to analytics. So typically organizations start with historical analytics, descriptive analytics, and want to achieve some, some more mature levels like predictive analytics or even prescriptive analytics. Uh, prescriptive analytics is something that actually is not just getting insights from data, but also firing or triggering some actions based on the findings that you that you discover in data. So this is actually the, let's say, North Star of each organization to make sure that my insights, my analytics can influence what happens in the organization, uh, hopefully automatically or semi-automatically. So data platform for analytics needs to fit those requirements and make it able for organization to move from lower maturity to, to the higher maturity. Now, is that easy? Well, not really, because if you want to build end-to-end -end solution for analytics or, or the platform for analytics, typically it takes some stages or core or blocks, building blocks for the architecture. So you have data integration, which is for ingest ingestion of the data from different sources and transformation of those of, those, of this data. You have some kind of storage or, or serving layer, ideally both. So, for example, the data lake become, uh, becomes now nowadays, um, I would say, the most preferred way to store the data, at least when, when the data lands in, in, in the cloud. And the reason is because it's inexpensive. It is based on some well-known open source uh, paradigms like, uh, H, like HDFS. And it's, it can be used easily by multiple systems. You're not locked into just one platform for analytics. Then you build some kind of serving layer like data warehouse or lake house. So let's say a warehouse built on top of the data that sits in the uh, data lake in, in object storage in, in the cloud. And then you serve this data to different systems uh, of which BI and reporting platforms can be uh, some of those. So Power BI sits on the right side of the slide in BI and reporting, um, and that's that's quite a complex architecture if you if you look at the building blocks. Typically, those building blocks can be separate services in the cloud, maybe even not just not just in one cloud, but in multiple clouds. So imagine how difficult it may be to maintain, uh, integrate all those all those pieces together. And it may create silos because people will bring their own skills, their own preferences uh, to those uh, to those architectures. And you can face things like uh, people uh, that are familiar with Spark 
not being able to collaborate efficiently and effectively with people who are more SQL fans. That's quite typical. Uh, having said that, that's actually the reason why Microsoft figured out the Azure Synapse Analytics service. So it's a platform as a service uh, product served in Azure, which unifies the experience for end-to-end -end analytics, starting from data ingestion and integration, ending up on serving the data for, uh, for the purpose of enterprise. So you can build warehouses or lake houses uh, covering the data lake using Synapse, and on the way, using different components of Synapse, single service, you can uh, you can run the whole pipeline of your of your uh, analytics, starting from getting data to Azure from different different systems, on premises, cloud, whatever, going through your favorite uh, runtimes for data processing and and serving SQL, Spark, even others other solutions like Data Explorer for telemetry and log, log analytics. And, it, and all that covered with one single pane of glass for monitoring and management and security. So that's actually the reason why Microsoft uh, introduced Synapse Analytics a couple of years ago. Now, having said that, notice one thing here at the bottom of this, uh, of this, of this little box that presents Azure Synapse Analytics, there is, there is the data lake storage generation too. So the data lake basically. And again, let me highlight this. Data Lake is at the baseline of Azure Synapse Analytics. Whatever runtime you will use, SQL Serverless, SQL Dedicated Pool, or, or Spark, or Data Explorer, at some point you will have your data in the Data Lake, and that's where, you, where all those runtimes meet to consume the data, to get the data from. So uh, Lake-based approach is right now uh, is right now quite popular. The same the same rule is followed by multiple vendors, uh, all major cloud vendors, uh, and and also so ma some major vendors for analytical platforms. Now, having said that, Synapse does not address all the requirements for different roles. Let's face it; it's it's natural that even that even the service that is that complex will not cover everything. So, if you split the typical work of people that do analytics just in two roles, simplified approach. On one hand, you will have data engineer, let's call him Roger. On the other hand, uh, there is data analyst. Let's, let's, let's make him named Ash. Apologies, no ladies on the slide, sorry. Anyway, Roger is more about doing things related to Synapse as a synapse as, as, as a platform. So he's, he's responsible for be building data pipelines that start with ingestion of data, cleaning, cleansing the data, transform, transforming it into meaningful form, modeling it for enterprise serving layer like warehouse or lake house, and maybe create some enterprise IT driven reporting solutions. On the other hand, Ash is more related to business orientation. So his job is to gather business requirements, no business domains. He may be uh, actually working for some of the department, specific department covering only a portion of business. And his interest is to explore the data that sits in the enterprise systems and the data sources provided externally that may not be uh, incorporated into enterprise uh, serving layers and create meaningful reports or even reporting systems that, in, that impact business decisions and share those reports with business users for them to do everyday job and you know, plan operation and work operationally, strategically, um, and uh, can't remember the third layer, but in general, it, it can impact all the aspects of uh, organization or department when it comes to analytics. So he's closer to the business business users. Now, looking at those two, you may think, hey, so actually let's make Roger working with Synapse and, and Ash working with Power BI and they should be good. Well, yes and no, because it, 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 will, it would actually uh, be very much like we had, uh, we had situations on premises where people were building warehouses on SQL Server, Oracle, and just databases. And then analysts were, were working on the systems 
like reporting services, uh, Excel, whatever you have there for bringing the data to the business user. When in reality, it may be connected. So the, 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 the challenge here, even having those two great platforms is to is how to connect them, not just technology te in, in terms of technology, but in terms of processes to make them working together and finding some leverage between two requirements. One is the requirement from enterprise side or, or maybe IT more, more IT side. Let's have the data managed in a way so that, you know, we know exactly what's the data landscape, what's the what's the scope of the data we own and manage. So we build warehouses and lake houses and Roger is in charge. But on the other hand, we want data analysts to have some level of freedom because they need to, again, one of the challenges is to serve data to the masses quickly. So data model is actually a step towards this approach. So let's build managed self-service business intelligence by bringing some experience that is slightly between what used to be in Power BI and what is in uh, in enterprise systems like Synapse. So, so what actually is the, this data mart? It is a combination of three Power BI items or artifacts. One, you get data flow that is for data ingestion. You can ingest the data, for example, coming from Synapse. Two, you bring the data to Power BI and keep it or, and store it in the, in the fully managed SQL database. You may consider Azure SQL database. And three, in, immediately once you create the data, the data, data mart in Power BI, you get automatically created data set for serving data to business users in reports. So this may actually work perfectly with any kind of uh, serving layer built on top of Synapse, whether it's Lakehouse or Warehouse. I will show you the Lakehouse scenario because right now I think it's more popular and it's and it's more convenient for companies that do, may not have the scale of data going into terabytes or petabytes, and they want to optimize cost cost at the same time. So. Um, the artifacts for on the left side, just just to just to cover that as well. You will see me creating a pipeline for data ingestion, maybe some kind of transformations. Maybe let, let, let's assume just uh, just for ingestion. Then you will see scripts and notebooks. Scripts for SQL experience, notebook. Well, actually, also for SQL experience. You will see that in a second. And uh, that's that's what I'm going to uh, create uh, using uh, Synapse platform. And you will see me creating only data mart for Power BI, but as I mentioned, it creates under the hood three items that cover end-to-end -end going from getting, getting data from your enterprise serving layer, ending up uh, with data set that can be consumed by reports. So um, one, one slide for you to, to maybe get some uh, great overview on what Data Mart is. I love this concept and this diagram from uh, from uh, Melissa Coates. So uh, I think this is uh, this is actually uh, one of the websites worth worth visiting. Just go there and then uh, there's this great explanation on, on what actually this Data Mart is and what can be the scenarios for using Data Marts. So what I see as, as scenarios for Data Mart. Why, why this better together? I highlighted this. We, we, we want to leverage between IT, IT needs and business needs. So on business side, you will have flexibility, ease of use and agility, quick, quick, quickly provide business insights. On the IT needs, you will have governance, security and scalability, scalability because you can store terabytes, petabytes of data easily. So what I see as, as scenarios first, we build enterprise serving layers in Synapse. I bring the data to the data lake. I build one of two, one of the two or both, lakehouse or data warehouse, depending on your architecture and preferences. I will show you a lakehouse approach. So lakehouse approach will be typically based on the assumption that we store the data in the data lake in expensive storage. This, in this case, Azure Data Lake Generation 2. 
We uh, split the data in phases as we work on the data. Bronze layer is for raw data falling in the, in the cloud from different platforms, source systems. Silver is for curated data, so data that uh, is a bit, uh, you know, take, we, we take some, some actions related to data quality, uh, data structures, etc. And we give the data some meaningful format like Delta Lake. And then we serve the data using gold layer, which typically means that I will do some, well, star schema modeling, or at least going into this direction. So very similar to what we expect in Power BI. That's gonna be covered by Synapse. And I will use Synapse serverless SQL pool. Why Synapse serverless SQL pool? Because it is there. It can be inexpensive. It is priced per data processed. So whenever you write SQL query, it, it is, it, you are charged by the, the amount of data processed and ta taken and, and queried from, from your data lake. And, and, and actually, it's just another SQL, so you can connect it easily um, with Power BI. Now, what, what comes next? You could. I will show you just one example of notebook that brings cognitive services uh, to you know data enrichment. It will be just an example how easy it is, but um, in general, you can bring any external AI service. It can be cognitive services like text analytics, sentiment detection, for example. It can be open AI. Yes, you can do prompts and uh, work on data much like chat GPT does. And you can bring machine learning from Azure uh, in order to bring uh, to bring some uh, governed machine learning modeling uh, and storing models outside of Synapse. But then, then it comes to Power BI. So why data maths and when data maths? So one, fast prototyping. This is a database. Keep in mind, it is a database that is stored in Power BI. So you can build the kind of uh, prototype of data mart with space between data and mart for data warehousing or data lake housing purposes. Second, it is actually great for uh, building kind of uh, data products that are stored on the Power BI side and can be queried by people with SQL skills. So imagine even data mesh can be covered by a combination of centrally positioned synapse with Lakehouse, for example, serving data for different departments into separate data models for the users. And the third one is if you if you need external sharing, that's quite easy to, to do with data models because they just have this share, external sharing option built in. So that's actually what I see as a major scenarios. By that, you can also work around some challenges that you may face when working with Synapse. For example, when you when you try to work with several SQL pool, you don't want users to query all your data lake data. And some stupid queries may simply go and scan terabytes of data, making you pay for those terabytes of data processed. So that's that can be easily work, work, uh, worked around by using data maths. Second, if you face some uh, concurrency and scalability uh, problems with uh, one of the runtimes, it's it can be a solution to spread the data into uh, smaller pieces, smaller databases on a hub and spoke architecture uh, using data marts as well. Keep in mind, data marts are Power BI premium features uh, feature, and they require you to have either P capacity or uh, premium per user license for Power BI. You can. You can, in theory, you can use Power BI Embedded to mimic this behavior. Um, there can be, yes, there, there can be direct link between cognitive services and Power BI, but if you want to work on the on the data that is stored centrally in your, in your serving layer in enterprise, lake house or data warehouse, you will use cognitive, cognitive services uh, on top of Azure Synapse. And uh, I, would, I would say this, with Power BI, the, the 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 capabilities of in integration with uh, cognitive services are still uh, not on the level of the of the uh, integration between Synapse and and uh, and uh, cognitive services. So uh, this box here, don't read it as just uh, cognitive a cognitive APIs. It's much more. It's uh, it's also data machine learning uh, machine learning service in Azure. 
It can be also uh, some some of the open source uh, open source frameworks for machine learning. So Synapse ML, which I will show you in a second in a demo, is actually uh, a kind of integration between Synapse and uh, practically any API that is related to uh, to AI. So cognitive APIs are just an example. And I agree that you can connect, of course, uh, cognitive cognitive APIs with Power BI, especially if you have a Power BI Premium in, in place. Yes, thanks for that. Um, OK, so let's um, let's move forward. And I have a demo for you, finally. <laughs> all, all the slides are, are, are maybe not that over, but almost. So let me switch to my demo environment <clears throat> and um, let's start uh, again, let's let's start on the Synapse side. So I mentioned on the on the Synapse side, you want to build this uh, enterprise serving layer. That's the ultimate goal. And um, the the first the first point is al al always to bring the data to Synapse, or at least to the data lake that is under under my Synapse workspace. So this is Synapse workspace. Uh, you you typically work with Synapse workspace using. The web UI provided by Microsoft, it's called Synapse Studio. So um, you have to create Synapse Workspace in order to bring this experience to life, right? And the first step that you can do is actually go and simply click, click ingest. Now that's interesting. Just a simple button to click, just like in Power BI. And um, what I have here, I can, I can simply run uh, one time copy task that will bring the data from some source to my data lake or synapse, whatever I choose, or I can even move from point A to point, to point B. It doesn't have to be synapse as a landing landing um, destination destination um, um, destination part of my transform of my pipeline. So what I will do, I will take the data from uh, sample New York City TLC trip record data data set. I will just pick one. One of the files, Yero Taxi Trip Records for year 2022, January. It's not that complex. Uh, thanks for thanks for sharing the the, the screenshot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, power Power Query is so powerful. <laughs> Love it. Anyway. So what I will do, I will bring a single file from HTTP website to the data lake. For for the just for for the demo, how this how this integration, how this ingestion may look like. So let me just go and click next, and uh, let's create a new connection. I will use the HTTP connect connector. Now notice that the number of connectors here is significant. It's over 100 connectors. I'd say pretty similar to what you have in Power Query, right? So you can bring your data to the uh, to the enterprise. Enterprise serving layer quite easily. Now let's click continue and let's just paste this URL. I, I just copied uh, that points to the specific parquet file stored in on the website. Uh, I will use anonymous uh, authentication type. Let me just test the connection successfully, so I can create this connection to the data source. So there's a new connection to the data source. Now <clears throat> let's let's go further. The second step is to point uh, what is the format. Unfortunately, for HTTP uh, connector, it does not detect automatically the format, but I'm good to go and I can I can explain this is actually parquet with snappy compression. Good. Let's go next. Now, the destination. I, I've already explained that Synapse comes in duet with uh, default data lake. So I will pick this default data lake, which already has a connection built in whenever I create my new my new Synapse workspace. So that's great. Actually, I can bring the data in immediately in my data lake structures. So I will select the folder where the, where the data will be stored. Let me pick it a sandbox, uh, sandbox um, cont container, some open data sets, and then hopefully New York City. Man, demo gods are with me or not? Okay, trip small. That's my folder that I want. That I want to have this data. Okay, probably I didn't delete my previous demo effect, so I will just have this in in this folder. Let's uh, give it a name. Let's maybe call it. 
um, let's maybe call it this uh, DBA virtual user. So let's 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 make sure this actually lands in my data lake. So I'm not cheating. <coughs> And if I'm if I'm lucky enough, yeah, I am or not. Testing connection to the file path. My day like is terribly slow today. It's the demo gods. Fortunately, I will not use it extensively for next demos, but uh, let me just try to go and and have it ready. Let me copy this. Why is it taking so long? Shouldn't be that far, that, that long. <coughs> In the meantime, do you have any questions? Thanks for sharing the screens from Power Query. I, I know there are some Power BI fans <laughs> sitting there. In the audience. Okay, there is Parker and Snappy as a as my landing landing format. Let me just leave the task names uh, default, and that's it. I just build up my first pipeline that brings data from some external data source sitting somewhere in the uh, on the website to my data lake, and hopefully, once this completes, I will have several things uh, in place. First of all, I will have my pipeline. So I can show you that it actually builds some building blocks of the pipeline, just a single step, copy data from point A to point B. Now, those pipelines can be by far more complex. For example, this one here does a bit more. It actually takes a list of tables. Now, hopefully there are some SQL developers in the audience, so you will you will quickly elaborate on what's what's going on here. So I'm just selecting the list of tables sitting in a single schema and passing schema and table name as parameters to for each loop. So this loop actually goes through all those tables from my SQL server sitting in the cloud and it copies the tables from the from the from the SQL SQL Azure SQL database to my uh, to my data lake into parquet format but notice that every single uh, every single iteration is parameterized. So here I have schema name and table name passed from every single iteration. So whenever a new file lands in the leg, it is named differently. And even more, those tasks occur in parallel. So it's it's heavily parallelized. You can build more sophisticated uh, sophisticated pipelines than just moving from point A to point B. And you can bring the data from multiple sources as well. So I have my pipeline, but also I have my pipeline completed. So let's look at the monitor. I can see that, hey, pipeline runs actually happened. Uh, this is my pipeline. It's completed successfully. I can, of course, see what happened under the hood and how much data was actually transferred from point A to point B. And finally, I can go to the data hub. And here I have my linked tab that allows me to explore my data lake. So not only databases, also storage that sits under the under the hood can be explored easily. And I have my sandbox uh, container here. So let me just take a look and check whether my file really landed in the data lake. So here I have my file. It landed here even even more. Since it's par since it's parquet, so a format that is not natively supported by serverless SQL, even without creation of any database, not just in, not, not like in SQL Server where you have to create <laughs> where you have to create some database to query the data, I can immediately create a script just by right clicking on the file that will select some data from this from this um, file, right? It takes some time with the first first run, of course. But um, yeah, it's it's just quick, quick. I have my my ways to quickly explore the data. So 
Now, when I'm good with those pipelines, when I build some uh, data ingestion, I have my data in the Delta data lake, I can explore the data and find the values, uh, the, 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 the way I, can, I have to transfer, transform the data in order to meet my uh, enterprise serving layer requirements. Okay. Now, let me show you some more on what can you do having this capability of server SQL being able to query the data sitting in the data lake. I will bring some more data formats. So I already quer queried Parquet files. Notice that I can also query, query things in this way, having wildcards. So whenever you whenever you will you're willing to query the data sitting in the folder, you basically use star as a wildcard, and that's it. I can also uh, quickly uh, quickly query CSV files. So, of course, the options changes, but this can be easily produced by right clicking the CSV file, and some of the some of the code will be produced by uh, by the generator, and then you can customize it for your for your own purposes and build uh, views on top of that. Right, so you can immediately serve the data from the data lake covering by covering the data using SQL logic, views, whatever. So this data can be actually easily visualized in this environment. So I can, for example, show you that, hey, uh, the biggest the biggest uh, revenue in invoices I had in month November, right? And the same as is about JSON, but let me just skip the demo on JSON because I need to move forward. Now, once you have the data in the data lake and you explore the data, you don't have to explore it by just SQL. Let me show you. The, the, other ex, the other experience is actually notebook. It's based on the mix of different languages. So having in mind that you are mostly SQL guys, I'm the same. I don't, I don't like writing lots of, lots of Python code. So what is notebook? Notebook is actually as an, an experience that allows you to combine comments or documentation with code cell that may be executed. So here I'm taking data from the data lake into an object called data frame. It's a kind of data set uh, that Spark is using for processing data. But then I can do lots of things. I can, for example, build additional columns using PySpark. It's not that interesting. But what I can also do is I can switch to SQL and since I have a super easy method of writing the data to the table, notice here, I write the data to a table called trips 2022 underscore 06, right? So this is a table, and here is the table referenced from SQL. Notice I switch to SQL using magic command percent percent SQL, and then I'm good. I'm working with SQL. It's not transact SQL, it's Spark SQL, but it's very similar to what you have in SQL Server. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you're familiar with ANSI SQL, then you can actually force uh, the compatibility of, of Spark SQL with ANSI SQL. So that, that can be quite useful. Why I'm showing you this? Because next, when I have the data in the data lake, in the bronze layer where the raw data lands, I typically follow the pattern that goes like this. I curate the data using notebooks, but notebooks can be, of course, packed with SQL. Here I'm using SQL to replace values for a single column with some uh, some recognized patterns that I that I see in the data. Right. So you basically build uh, step by step views. You can treat it as a moving between temporary tables that do transformations. That's a, that can be a pattern for data warehouse. In Lakehouse, you will build either folder structures or folder structure plus tables. So here, finally, I'm landing in, just scroll down, I'm landing in the uh, writing data to the Delta format, notice here. So I'm taking data frame, writing to the Delta format. Why Delta? Because it's open source. It can be easily read by other platforms like Databricks. Uh, it can uh, it can uh, it can actually be updated and merged, so it it uh, accepts ACID transactions, 
it it serves uh, features like uh, the versioning of data, time travel. You can get back in in his, into historic historical versions of data, and also it can be served as tables from lake lake databases. So um, this is the second step. I curate the data, keep the, keep the curated data in the silver layer, and finally. I get to the point when I when I'm serving the data in the dimensional model. So I build dimensions, facts, and uh, things that are related with serving data to the BI reporting solutions like Power BI. I know that you can of course move the transformation uh, the transformation upstream to Power BI. Yes, you can. But if you build if you're building uh, the, the enterprise solution, typically you want to have to make sure that the consistency is kept as soon as possible for different systems and platform accessing the same data. So finally, I can just notice here, I'm storing the, 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 the data in tables, but those tables have physical location in my data lake. So they are stored as delta, delta format in my data lake, but hey, I can cover them with, uh, with uh, SQL views. So knowing the location of the files in the gold layer, I cover them with SQL views and serve to Power BI. And then I can go and switch to Power BI to build my data mat. Now, because we are running out of time, let me show you just uh, how, to, how, to, how to click through the data mat and then I will switch to existing data mat to, to, set, to save some time. So first of all, you have to be in the workspace uh, that is covered by some premium licensing, so either uh, P capacity or, or Power BI premium per user, and then you will be good to create data map. So you just name the data map as expected. Let me use it. Let me use the best the best name that I can provide. Test in this moment, and data map is, is quite simple to build. You just use the same pattern you typically you typically use for building data sets and going from uh, power query, queries, getting your data to uh, the data set, then modeling the data and finally serving it uh, using uh, different tables with maybe measures, et cetera, uh, to your Power BI report. Um, this may take some time actually so let me open another instance a power bi portal and let's try to open existing data mart maybe by the way I've, i i hope you are you, you are using the newest uh, option pin workspace it's great if you have dozens of workspaces in your power bi tenant so i have a data mart existing here let me just open that uh in the meantime you can see that Creating a data map can take a while, especially when you are presenting live and doing demos for user groups. But hey, let's switch to this. Uh, so the first step is that you get the data. So it's just a Power Query or data flows experience. You're getting all those connectors. So for Synapse, there are actually quite a few of connectors. I would suggest you to go with this, Azure Synapse Analytics SQL DW. And if you want to connect to the lake house, make sure you copy from the Azure portal the endpoint address for server, serverless, serverless SQL, SQL endpoint. That's actually the server address. So, hey, there is some SQL. So you paste it here, and then you just have to well, specify uh, the name of the database. So for me, it's New York City lake house. I've been here before, so my connection uh, connect, uh, uh, my credentials are defined. So you can see, I see the details, my tables or views specified in, in the database, nothing very special. Then I can transform, build some Power Query, uh, Power Query limitations of data, pick specific tables uh, horizontally and vertically, filter the data or do some transformations if required. And finally, I'm landing in, in, in this. I know 10 minutes, nine minutes. <sighs> Lots of things to cover. So what I can do with the, the, the data maps? Now, number one, you have tables which you can uh, which, which, which you can see uh, in the view like in Power Query. That's number one. So transformations are being done there. Under the hood, there is data flows. Secondly, you can switch to query and query the data using 
well, nothing really, uh, nothing really surprising. Using SQL written by yourself. Ah, something's not right here. I probably, probably it's, it's a kind of still bug in the, in the, in, in the preview mode. But hey, you can query the data. Notice all the views. Uh, those are views actually. All the views are uh, stored in within model schema. Now you can also build those 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 kind of queries using Visual Visual Designer. So you drag and drop tables, select uh, select transformations, just like you do in Power Query, and then on top of that you can build a model. Um, now queries can be also if you if you step into queries, this can be also uh, immediately visualized using Power BI reports. So when you have the data produced by a query. You can immediately visualize it. Okay. Now, in the model, you can create those relationships. Just drag and drop from one table to another, and you create the, those those uh, relationships. They are stored in in SQL database that is behind the scenes. So you can even query for uh, to find the relationships. You can create measures. Now. I'm not sure if that's visible, probably not, but let me just uh, make it large enough. And uh, here in the aggregation table, I see I see some measures written with DAX. Yes, DAX can be here. Now, also notice that one of the tables, fact trip, is quite hidden from the users in the model. So I can actually import the tables to the data mart for just for analytics uh, use, using SQL, not DAX and Power BI techniques. <clears throat> Why would I do that? Because for some for some users, the experience of uh, tables that will span millions of rows may not be that great. So we will be able to to just run, run queries using this experience. But in, in the report itself, it may be hidden from you from the user. And finally, you build the report on top of that. So let me. Oh, sorry. One more thing, very important. If you're in the model, you can actually cover that with um, row level security. So the complexity is completely on the data sets data set side. This, this data set automatically built within data mart and not on the SQL side. Right. So it's easier experience to, to use and manage. And right now I can see that, hey, I built some uh, very form operator role that I can easily try. I can just switch to this role. And whenever I query the data, even using my uh, written queries with my hands, I will see the numbers only for uh, specific roles. Uh, so it's, it's narrowed to a specific vendor. With this query, I, I'll probably will not be able to show you this. I think uh, this this will be or even 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 in the data I will I will see that see this uh, this experience. Let me just switch to the data view and uh, vendor. So there is a you question see. is yeah. the data mart will produce the data set, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's let's see let's see what what's hap what's happening what's happening when I create data mart. Now there are, there are two artifacts visible. One is the data mart itself. So when you click on that, you get the SQL experience. Now, notice this. You can actually go and copy SQL Server endpoint and connect using Management Studio, your favorite tool to work with SQL Server, to this specific data mart. And this will look uh, like this. You will see views in a database that has very not that not that user friendly name, but you will have views stored in within model schema that are just like just your queries that you created using uh, Dataflow. Okay, Dataflow itself is not visible in Power BI portal. The only thing you get uh, with your data mart is this default data set. It's marked as default. Why? Because you can create more data sets based on uh, on your data mart if needed. But this data, this data set comes with some features immediately because, again, it co you can cover uh, your your data mart with RLS immediately. You can uh, create measures relationships right away. Uh, it's already connected and it's using proactive caching. So whenever the data in your data mart changes, it's actually 
uh, the data set is actually act, uh, is, is updated within 10 minutes or so. So you, you will see this experience um, in, a, in quite quite soon. Now, what's the difference between data mart and data set, you will ask? Well, there are some limitations in terms of DAX, which you can use on, date, on default data set for sure, because uh, in, you will see that uh, in the model they are they are seen as uh, the tables are seen as direct query mode, and second, uh, you can store by far more data in data mass than in data sets. Uh, One hundred gigabytes uh, is is I guess the um, the official limitation of data mass, but uh, I I can tell you this: in this specific data mass, there is a table called fact trip, which easily store. Um, 150 million rows and that's that's not it uh, you can store by far more using using this so uh this actually this sql database uh, under the hood is uh, is covered by uh, column store indexes as you may expect to uh reply to, to quickly respond to to your um analytical queries Whew. so now a step back i know i'm running out of time but just one one more one more thing one more thing to show you in the in synapse because when, once you create data mart and you have this default data set, it is super easy to go back to Synapse and connect to the Power BI world using uh, the experience in Synapse Studio. So you basically quick, quickly click on the, let me just do one more, one more thing. You click on the visualize button here or go to manage and create linked service to Power BI. So just just a just a connection to Power BI workspace, and you then can switch to develop experience in Synapse. And here, notice there is Power BI tab with your workspace visible and your data set accessible for reporting. And you can build a, a report in Synapse just for data exploration, dirty you know uh, analytics uh, on your, on top of your data that is that sits in Data Mart based on Synapse. Um, and you can visualize the data as re as expected, as required. So, for example, I can quickly see how many trips was were there in the in the data set. I can see that two billion, two billion. Actually, that's the size of the data set. So, um, this integration is both ways. It's not just about bringing data from Synapse to Power BI. It also it's also about uh, being able to connect uh, Power BI workspaces to Synapse at, and um, doing this analytics in synapse based on what sits in power bi as well so if if power if power bi analysts get access to synapse and can play with synapse he or she can also bring the, the experience from power bi reports and data sets uh, in into synapse studio ui and play in a single single pane of glass with everything okay uh one stop shop yeah so my things for you to remember and less and maybe a call to action from this learning now power bi and synapse will get integrated more and more you saw databases in power bi it's actually azure sql database that's the proof that this intelligent data platform is not just another name it's, it's also about combining services all together right so the direction for you from this presentation i know it was it was fast. The demo was fast and a, a bit chaotic. Fast and uh, furious. Fast and furious. Number one, those services can complement each other. If you want to be more self-service, Power BI is great. Uh, if you want to have some enterprise solutions, Synapse is typically great for lake housing and warehousing. Um, the integration will be will be visible even more. Go with Lakehouse approach, store things, uh, especially in the data lake in the silver and gold layers using Delta Lake format, because that's an open source format that can be easily consumed by different different services. Now, data science so is built in both. Just a notification, one sec, we are at the yeah. top of the hour. Those yeah. who want to stay around, please stay around. I have some time. I can spend that time with you guys. Yeah, okay? so I, I, have, I, have, I have some time for take your questions. This is this is the call to action for you. We have yes. a single slide. We have a single slide that covers Synapse resources for community. Make sure you visit this site, aka.ms slash Synapse Community Resources. Um, you find you can find lots of uh, interesting stuff there, uh, starting from 
our YouTube blogs and things that you can use for learning purposes, but also some ways to interact with us. Synapse Influencers Program, lots of swag to get, some nice Synapse socks and, and stickers for your laptops is just one thing. But we are doing lots of lots of different activities with community uh, as well. Um, don't don't uh, miss the great things about uh, learning experiences. Um, some some accelerators also to bring to bring you with the speed if you come into uh, some production uh, production deployments of Synapse. Of course, for Power BI there are also uh, some interesting resources. Uh, do not miss the latest Wave One for 2023. Um, this is actually the latest uh, semester plan, aka the message plan 2023 RW1 Power BI. Now, don't do screenshots of those slides. It's here. <laughs> and, and now, and now it's awesome. time for and now it's time for questions. But just to wrap it up. Use both services, play with them, find the ways that work for you the most. But I suggest going with Lakehouse. It will not ruin your budget. It's a myth that that uh, Synapse is for rich people who spend millions every single month. Uh, can I paste the link? Of course I can. Let me just go and uh, quickly copy this into the chat window. Hopefully I can do it right away. There you go. So again, um, feel free to connect with me and uh, now it's time for the questions. <laughs> so everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my God. Come yeah, on. Thank you. Seen so many thank yous in a while, man. Thank you is the thank you is the worst, uh, the worst scenario. Yeah, there is a hand up. Anders. Yes. Yay. Cool. So I'll stop the recording now. We can continue when for it, a minute yes, or so. Yes, of right? course. Absolutely. When is it better to use Azure SQL rather than Azure Synapse? So my answer would be this. Um, you can you can use um, you can use Azure SQL whenever you want to have your SQL engine for warehouse, hopefully, or some some kind of serving layer uh, separated from everything else. Because notice that in Synapse, you typically build not just uh, databases. You build some solutions that start with ingestion, going through some lake 